out here. We trying to see what's happening. So today I got my girl. I want you to tell us where you from and what brings you out today. Um, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, Duval. <laughs> and that's what's up, y'all. That is what's happening. Yo, it's your boy Newface, and we are live on Edgewood, and I got your Hip Hop History Minute. But besides the hip hop facts, you know what else is important? Reading is still fundamental. When you're live on Edgewood, you know what's better than that? Reading on Edgewood. So today I got your book selection of the day. Next up we got, we're in ATL, right? Snowman, live on Edgewood. Definitely a highly recommended book. Adversity for sale. He didn't just sell snow. He sold knowledge. You read this book, you're gonna learn a lot about this gentleman right here. I definitely recommend this book. And you see from the length, not really a lot. You're gonna read this in a good day. I read this in a half a day. Back to you, Scotty. Hey man, it's live on Edgewood. Please make some noise one more time, man. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, man. Shout out to my DJ, DJ Samoa. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Okay, I am Scotty ATL. It's going down. You are live at Grills by Scotty today. I got my co-host with me, Erica Dutchess. Erica, what's up? Yeah, what's up, you uh, What's up, Scotty? Hey. Scotty got that shit on today. I hey. see you. I see you. I see you. Hey. Okay, look. It's going down. I'm super excited about this episode, man. I've been waiting on this all week. Yeah. My partner's been hitting me up. We didn't have people came from out of town to see this. It's Back. going down, man. We got the legendary. DDP in the building, Diamond Dallas Page. Man, make some noise right now, man. It's going down, man. Dude, I was not expecting this shit at all. <laughs> ah, I thought we were coming here just chill out and do some do normal podcasts like right, we do. Right. You lit this fucker up. Yeah, what's up? What's up, man? What's up, man? Hey, man, people came from out of town to see. I, when I came in this morning, people told me they came from Jacksonville, another guy from South <laughs> Carolina. Awesome. Yeah, to come see you, man. So, wow. hey, can y'all make some noise for, for DDP one more time? <laughs> Yeah. Thank, thank you. You know, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes is by Maya Angelou. Yes, sir. And she said, you may not remember what he said or what he did, but you'll always remember the way he made you feel. Yep. Yep. And that's why people came in. Yeah. Because it's the only time, you know, this, you know, so it's, uh, that's awesome. And, and, how I, and how I know this guy, because my daughter loves him. Man. And, my, and my granddaughter loves him. And you've been such an awesome, someone to look up to for Brittany. And, wow, uh, man. Yeah, Shout like, out to man, Brittany, man. Lot, a lot of power, a lot of power. Yeah, yeah power. man. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you, for sure. This is Erica in the back. This is our lovely Erica co-host, Duchess. Erica Dutch. Yeah, how did I miss you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know, right? I know, right? I know. Right? I know right? <laughs> 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 it's not. Yeah. What's up, yeah. What's up, <laughs> OK, all right, it's going down, man. So. <laughs> Oh, oh man. man, so this, this is like family man today. So I got, all right, first of all, I want to start out by saying that um, a lot of people don't know this, but you used to play basketball. Oh yeah, that was a, let me, let me give you a little build in this because playing basketball, it became like my life. Um, I was a football player as a nine, 10, 11, 12. And at 12 years old, man, I thought I wasn't playing for Dallas Cowboys someday, a defensive wow. end, like, like I saw that. And then one day I walked out and got hit by a car. It hit, it hit my front knee, my face bounced off the hood and I flew 42 feet from the point of impact. Mm. That was in 1968. So there was no such thing as rehab unless you played for the Knicks or you know, the Jets or whoever. Yeah. Um, there was no such thing as rehab. So my doctor's like, you can never play football again. Mm. And man, I cried like a baby, man. And I had my mom take me to the Jets and um, uh, he worked on Willis Reed and he worked on Joe Namath's knee, this guy, Dr. Nicholas. 
and I'm, you know, I'm this guy. He's going to, he's going to show me. He's going to help me. And he said, "You're never going to be Joe Namath. You're never going to be Willis Reed. Hit the books and study." Damn. Well, That's I was crazy. ADD yeah. and dyslexic. You know, I was reading at third grade level at the age of 30. So books were not in the scene for me. So I didn't ever play basketball up till that point. I didn't make the team in seventh grade. I didn't give a shit. I was a football player. Wow. But eighth grade, I gave a shit. And I was six foot two at the time. Um, I sat on the bench. I swore that shit would never happen. I never sat on the bench. Right. At nine, I was playing with the 12-year-olds. So I was sense. playing football. But now... You know, basketball is, is more of a skill game, you know, it, than I think than football, unless you're a receiver or quarterback or whatever. What, what position did you play in football? Defensive end. Okay. Yeah, I actually play both ways, defensive end and center. So, wow. you know, you don't really, you know, you hit. <laughs> right. You were aggressive. Right. It was aggressive, you know. And uh, what it taught me that summer, I played every, from the morning I woke up. If I wasn't having to go to work or the waves, I was a surfer. Mm-hmm. So if the waves weren't good. I was at a basketball uh, park from morning till night. And I played wow. and I played and I just kept getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And then that freshman year, I started, I averaged 16 points a game. We were undefeated and sophomore year, I started playing varsity. And so it just became my outlet because literally I couldn't read, man. And I, I became the king of the cheat sheets, you know? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and I also, yeah. I also was very involved right. because I can talk, Okay, you know, and I was very, you know, and the teachers liked me. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like cheated my way and got through school and graduated 229 of 229. Wow. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> whoa. But, but you was popular third, in school? What? Yeah, I was pretty popular. Okay. I was, you know, I was one of the, by the time I was sophomore, I was one of the leading athletes in our, you know, in our school. But, you know, later on, not knowing how to read and you can get around it. Um, but at some point you got to fucking figure that shit out, man. Exactly. And I heard Tony Robbins back when he was doing infomercials friggin' 40 years ago wow, and, or 35 years ago. And I couldn't read his books, but I could listen to his tapes. Mm-hmm. And at that point, Kimberly and I, my first wife, we'd gotten together and I decided I'm gonna learn how to read proficiently. And I would do baby steps, set a goal, I'm gonna read a book from cover to cover. And I know that may not seem like a big deal to most of you, but to me, it was fucking overwhelming. Right. So when you got hit with something you're gonna set out for yourself, you going to you don't wanna set yourself up to fail. So I set another goal, I'm gonna read one page from that book every day. That's good. Even I could do that. Right. And I didn't do it when I got out at night because I was running nightclubs. So who knows what time I'm going to get in at that mm. time. So every morning before my feet touched the floor, I put that page in. And it was a guy named Lee Iacocca who was the one who took uh, uh, Buick when they uh, went under. He was the cat responsible for bringing them back and taking them out of uh, you know uh, Chapter 11. A very smart guy and he had a great story. So that was the beginning of it. And then I just kept training and, you know, just, just making myself train, but not until I got to LA and I was 40, I was 48 at the time. They had a school called um, the Eris Learning Center. It was for kids and adults with, with ADD and, and dyslexia. And this woman, 85 years old, Rose, she was amazing, man. And, and she wow. could lay out these things and, you, and she would put them up and mix them around and then, you know, bring them back. Or you put them back in order and they all look mm-hmm. kind of alike. Mm-hmm. It was just little drills like that and things that she had me doing. I would go, because I'd be living in L.A., but I might go do an you know, autograph signing on the weekend or whatever. So I always would go see her on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I did for six months. She said I took home more homework than she ever had anyone take up. And I never did a bit of homework in my life. Wow. You know, wow. because I would, that's where I learned the bartering system. Right. You know, quid pro quo. It was hustling. I'll do this for you if you do this right. for me. Right, right, right. <laughs> Don't make it too good. Then right, you know. right. Don't get all the answers right. Just, just get, you know. Yo, give, me, um, give me enough yeah. to get by. Now, now, okay. Now <laughs> you say, say, let me finish, let me okay, finish. go ahead, go ahead. The oh. thing with basketball, 
What I learned from that is that work ethic equaled results because I kept getting better and better and better. Yeah. And inside my Hall of Fame ring, it says work ethic equals dreams, explanation point DDP. So that's a very wow. important message, you yeah. know, that everybody needs to know, you know. That's deep. That's yeah, deep. That's deep. Basketball is my, is my game. I played basketball growing up. I was a star basketball player, but they didn't let us play football. Mm. My coach came and got us off the field. I played for real. He wants you to get hurt. Yeah, yeah. He came and got actually like four or five of us. Our first starting lineup tried to go out and play right. football, but he came and got all of us out of practice. Mm. Now, you mentioned um, what, while you were working doing nightclubs, and I don't think a lot of people know this about you, but you used to run a nightclub called yep. Norma Jean, yeah, right? Yeah. Tell was, us about that. That was the first big, like, I ran a couple big clubs that weren't, uh, you know, the, the best as far as money put into it, but that was when we, we, we smoked, man. It was in Fort Myers, Florida, and it was called Norma Jean's Dance Club. Mm -hmm. And we had seven bars, big ass dance floor, and we would do visual comedian stuff up while songs were playing. So you had something else to look at, or you had hot girls, or I'd do like the, you know, the hot legs contest. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Bikini contest, right. wet t-shirt contest. This is down in Florida, you know? Right, right, so okay. So it was spring break, and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but that's, I tried to wrestle when I was 23, and it didn't work out for me, because I hurt my knee in my third match, and I didn't know anything. You know, I was just ignorant, went over the top rope and came down, torqued my knee. Dang. And my doctor Ooh. said, take wow. off a month and come back. That's how I got in, that's where I missed. I got taken away by the bar business because I'd been in the bar business since I was 17. Day crew, bouncer, bartender, um, you know, whatever needed to be done. But at 23, when I hurt my knee, I got a chance to run my first little rock and roll club. Now, this I'm taking off the time from wrestling. Right. And man, I forgot all about that wrestling dream with the booze, the broads, and the party. It was hot. Oh, it was hot. I was having too hot. much fun. You Okay, now, at Norma Jeans, is this where you had the pink Cadillac? Yeah, pink Cadillac. And what? I drove that fucker everywhere, man. For real? For real, man. You parted in front. Well, oh, I parked well, it right up front. It was where pink is Cadillac. the pink Cadillac now? Where, I, you know, God, I have no idea where that big Cadillac is now. <laughs> I used to call, this is before I was ever married. I used to call that the divorce wife I never had. Wow. And I had to put a lot of money in that fucker, you know? Right, like, right. Consistently, but I love that car. It was, it was, uh, it was a statement. And it ended up giving me my first break because you see, if you worked as a WWE in Tampa, the next night you're gonna work is in Miami. Well, that's 300 miles. And Fort Myers is right in the middle. Right. So what had happened was, I gotta uh, digress a little bit here. What happened was I'm in the bar business. I'm just having so much fun. I'm not even watching wrestling for once in a while. And then I hear about WrestleMania. Mm. But you had a lot of wrestlers that came by. Yeah, well, that's it. Though, right? that, yeah, that's it. What happened is I heard about WrestleMania. And at the time I was so pissed off, I was like, I walk. I didn't follow through with my dream. I should have been a part of that. Wow! From and these guys that were coming yeah. in, they yeah. were the ones no, telling you about it. Not yet. Not yet. Not not yet. This is right. Right before that. Right before that, they didn't come in yet. Because when I WrestleMania was like '84, so I didn't watch wrestling for years, like probably two and a half years. And the, the, on the TV, I was flicking the channels. You remember that shit, right? Right. Yeah, Some we, right. Well, we had, <laughs> right. Right. had right. your little right. brother do it. Um, <laughs> And uh, I, I was looking at channels, and up comes this dude who's got a bag over his shoulder, and he got swag, man, the way, like a purpose. He walks to that ring. Jake the Snake Roberts, Jake. man. Yeah, Jake the Snake. And I watch, and I watch his shit. Yeah. I watch his shit, and I was like, man, who is this? And then I watch his work in the ring, and I couldn't see through it. Oh, that looked fake. That looked... No, I couldn't see him through anything. Right. And then he cut a promo, and he like scary, man. Like, who is this guy? I was immediately a fan. Now, six months later, I'm in the back office. I just got through the crowd. We got like a thousand people. It was Saturday night. And I went to grab my keys, and right next to the, my, my desk is the monitors. I can see who's coming in, who's going out, and the back door. Mm -hmm. So, guy walks in, and I'm like, no. 
<laughs> it looked like Jake the Snake Roberts. The club's too packed, so I run. This I've been a fan I was. I ran, <laughs> I ran around the outside of the club. I got around to the front door and I go, Johnny, did a guy just walk in here look like Jake the Snake Roberts? He goes, yeah, everybody thinks it's him. I go in there, step in and I go, ooh, gotta slow down, don't want a fanboy. Right, <laughs> over, right, want right, a fanboy right. all over Jake. Right. And so I walk up to him and if you know Jake, when I walk up to him, I'm like, hey man, uh, you Jake Snake Roberts? Who wants to know? <laughs> That's what he said? Yeah, I go, <laughs> I said, the guy who runs this place, yes, what can I do for you? I said, what are we drinking? And we got fucked up. Wow, wow. that's dope. We got that's fucked cool. up that night. That's dope. And he would tell the other guys, hey, if, you know, if, you're, going, if, you're, stay, if you're going from Miami to Tampa, stop by and see that dude. He'll hook you up. He'll take care of you. He didn't pay for shit. Right. You know? right. I hooked him up. But he was also protected. Nobody could fuck with him. You know, and so the next thing you know, more of the guys are coming in. And man, one night, cool, man. the Bushwhackers was there, and so was Ted DiBiase, the Million oh, Dollar Man. man. Million Dollar Man, million dollar I know my team. I know my yeah. team. So I'm out there talking to Luke, and he's looking at the pink Cadillac. He's like, this is amazing. Call, mate, mate let, me, let, me call, let me call up, uh, I want to call Pat, Pat Patterson, uh, uh, the, the Honky Tonk Man, and uh, Jimmy Hart, they're looking for uh, an old car to uh, take it to WrestleMania. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And I'm like, you, you think they want to use this car? He goes, let me, let me, let me go. Uh, uh, Pat, uh, I'm sitting here with a, uh, this guy's got a pink out of that. Can he, uh, and he, why, you, 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 let me take a picture of it. So he took a picture of it, and he, again, he, he saw the car, and he, he called me back, and he was like, how much for the car? I said, if you ship it up there, because I don't want to drive to Canada, it was the one in Toronto. I said, if you ship it up there and fly me up, I'll drive it and I'll cost you nothing. By this time, I'm already Diamond Dallas Page and doing managing for in AWA. Okay. So Diamond Dallas chauffeur that day in WrestleMania six drove the car to the ring and it opened up the door for more guys to know me and build relationships. And you know how important in the entertainment yeah. business, yeah. relationships, it really, it's everywhere, but especially entertainment, it's so important for your relationships. And I don't mean, you know, a lot of people think it's all about who you know or who knows you, when the reality is, it's who's willing to say they know you. Ooh. Oh. No. Oh, yeah, no. Who's willing to pick up the phone ooh, and make a call and say, you need Scotty, you need to go over here and grill, man. Wow. You gotta see his grills. That's you real. know what I mean? You, you, who's gonna do that? And I built those relationships over the years. And- uh, Hey, what up, man? This your boy, Scotty. We're gonna get to our word on the street segment with my girl, E. E, what's up, man? Talk to the people. What's up, y'all? This your girl, comedian Erica Dutchess, and we're here live with Word on the Street. And, you know, I got some stuff I, people want to ask my people, DDP, man. So let me ask my partner right here. If you had one question to add DDP, what would it be? If you were to fight one person, who would it be and why? He said if you wanted to fight one person the last time, who would it be and why? Let us know. Peoples want to know. Word on the Street. What should have happened when I went to the WWE, it should have been people's champion versus people's champion. Yeah, come on. So let me, let me tell you how that Saturday came about. Night. Let me tell you why, why I thought of this. I thought of it years before I got there. But I was I went to a WWE show when I was at WCW. Mm -hmm. And a big show, I pretty much raised him in the business, got him ready for Hogan and all that. Because uh, I was always down the power plant. If the WCW wasn't using using me, I was down there training and training the young guys. And that's why I got so much better so fast because I was, I've engrossed myself in it. So I want to go by and see show. I go by and see him. Afterwards, we're getting ready to leave and the locker room's empty. And it's like, he goes, you want to meet The Rock? I said, yeah, I'd love to meet The Rock. So mm. Rock, he goes, um, hey, Rock, you here? Yeah, I'm in the bathroom, I'm in the shower. He goes, good, I got some huge Mark who's dying to meet you. I'm like, you fuck. <laughs> and then I just said, I go, and I don't want to meet you unless you're naked and you're all sudsed up like the Michelin man. <laughs> and, and Rock, 
you know, when you hear a voice you know, right. but you don't know it here, he sticks his head around the corner and he studs up like the Michelin man. He's right. all studs up. He goes, oh, diamond, I'll be out in a minute. So this is back when Rock had the, the, you know, the mullet shop. He was doing the Elvis thing, wearing the $1,500 Versace shirts. So he comes out, we talk, and I, I explained to him, you know, how tight me and Jake were. And Jake was booking when Rocky Maivia came in. And Jake calls me up, he goes, D, where do you see this kid, Rocky Maivia? He is so good looking, I don't know if I want to fight him or fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake and uh, Rock goes, that sounds like something Jake would say. I said, you know, he said you were gonna be huge. Uh, you're on your way. I said, he said Austin was gonna be huge when he was the ring bearer. And he said it to me in 93. He goes, Jake's got a great eye for talent. And uh, I said, listen, man, I love what you did. I caught you doing it uh, a couple weeks ago. The rock this and the rock that. Then you went back to yourself. The rock this, the rock that. You went back to yourself. And I said, that was really entertaining shit. And I said, good luck with everything. So walking out the door, and right before I walk out, I hear, hey, Diamond. <laughs> As Big Show gets out of my way, he's putting on one of those shirts. And you can just see him rolling into character and he goes you know diamond there's only one people's champion Woo, nice. and that's what big show did and wow. and i just deadpanned him wow. i looked at him and i went well rock you're right and you well you're looking at him oh that's good that's good clap it up clap it up one more time for ddt man please man now you because you used to manage wrestlers too before yeah. you got in it. Diamond yeah. Exchange was the name of your, yes. your management company. Yeah, and that that was uh, how I got that gig, bro. That, that was God's work. You know, God gives us all a gift, hey. yeah. you know, and what do you do with it? And uh, I think, <laughs> um, I, we were, Jake's in the club, the, you know, the, the Bushwhackers are in the club, the Nasty Boys. So many of the guys have been in the club that I used to, do all the commercials for the club. Right. And eventually I might throw in, ooh yeah, hot legs, thousand dollars. Right. <laughs> Miss it. Ooh yeah, dig it. Right, you know? right, and right. They had all been in the clubs. Macho had never been there, but they don't know if it's macho or it's not. <laughs> right. You know, it's, I could do Jesse Ventura, Hulk Hogan, all those cats back then. <laughs> and someone had seen it that had a little cable network, right? right. And they called it the Party News Network. And they said they wanted to come and film me doing the, you know, all the commercials and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's and during the shit, they show me my 6'2 big Cadillac. They, they show me at the studio. And I'm literally wearing a WrestleMania t-shirt. You know, I got the long hair down to here. I look like a wrestler, you know. And so at some point we're in my club. And they said, so where does the voice come from? Yeah. And about three nights before, we were all drinking. And I think uh, Ted came back through or whatever. And everybody's talking about wrestling. And we're counting the money and doing all that. And now in the bar, that's where we really drink after hours. Right. Because, you, you know, you got to be. You made your money. Everybody yeah, right. keep it And I didn't care. Drink whatever you want after hours. And so at some point, someone says, um, you know, I heard that you wrestled. I said, yeah, but not really. I, you know, it, was, it, it, you know, it didn't work out for me. And he said, what my buddy Smokey said, so what was your name? <laughs> I said, Handsome Dallas Page. Right. And, and he went, whew, you can forget about using that gimmick anymore. Uh. <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> and, and, uh, and so I just start thinking, I'm too old at 31 to be a wrestler. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, but I could be a manager. What if I, Jimmy Hart's got the Hart Foundation. What if I was Diamond Dallas Page and I had the Diamond Exchange? Right. So in my scribble, I'm writing that down on right. the thing. Right. I always tell people, just don't think it, ink it. Write it down, oh, burn like it in your it. brain. You know? Ink it, ink it, I like that. Like and if you don't like ink it, put it on your damn phone. I'm telling you now. Yeah. Put it on your phone. Like yeah. I had to ink like it. turn ink off a few of them, but on alarms. That's where I set all my goals for that day. Yeah. They're on alarms. Don't forget, 1215. Don't forget, 245. Any shit I don't want to forget, 
I put it on my damn phone, or overall I have the big, you know, picture board above that. So what ends up happening is I say, you know what? I'm too old to be a wrestler. I go, but I, Jimmy Hart's got the Hart Foundation and a diamond exchange. You know, everybody's like, oh yeah, boom, boom, shot, shot. And I'll tell you, you know, it's 1985 or 1886 because we're drinking gold schlager with gold and the peppermint schnapps. Oh yeah. What the fuck yeah, was that? Yeah, I never <laughs> yeah. So what ends up happening is I end up coming up with the idea of the diamond dolls. You know, there wasn't that yeah. many, you know, women involved in wrestling at the time. And Miss Elizabeth was beautiful, but she was girl next door beautiful. I said, what if I had a whole stable of the ladies and they were stripper hot? Come on now. Ah, 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 all right, all right. So ah. I was doing rap right before it was about to happen. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. And uh, the, um, you know, I put together a lot, a lot of the girls work for me. Right. The girls out, you know, it was, they look good though. Yeah, oh, hell yeah, they look yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> they looked real good. I got known as the beginning. You're the guy with the girls, you know, so right. that's right. not a bad thing, you know. And uh, so I, I, they saw a guy named Smitty, who has a, a radio show, saw that thing they did on the party news network because mm -hmm. at some point on that deal they said so where does the voice come from and that diamond dollars page the diamond exchange the diamond dolls it's right there in front of me and it's right next to a pair of white sunglasses and scotty if the white sunglasses aren't there i don't know if i do it because it became a mask for me oh. and, oh. and when he said that i looked down and i go this is it. I picked them up and I put them on. I said, the voice comes from Diamond Dallas Page, Daddy. I was born to be a professional wrestling manager. It's big, no, 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 Norma Jean's voice. And then I went back to talking like me. And then uh, that guy, Smitty, saw it, wanted me to come in and be a, you know, on his show. I go, right. dude, I don't really do it. I was just making that shit up. Right, right. And he goes, who cares? It's radio. I go, but I don't really know. He goes, well, I'm going to have Captain Lou Albano on the show. I go, you're going to be on with the captain? I'm in. Right. So I did it, and I did another show with Sergeant Slaughter. And at that night, we went out for a drink afterwards, and he says, you know, you got to do something with this Diamond Dallas Page thing. I go, do what? He's like, I got a friend of mine who used to be a boxing promoter. Now he's promoting wrestling up in the Midwest for the AWA. Right. Make him a tape. Make him a tape of what? See, I used to do so many wild things in the club. We'd have Rocky Horror Show. We did so many things, you know, creating storylines right. you know, that, that made people want to come. And he goes, you're really creative. He goes, you'll think of something. So I got three of my bouncers. And one I called Big Bad John. When I called, this guy was handsome as hell and shredded and beautiful, just really good guy. <laughs> I called him, and no one's ever used this name, but whoever does is going to make money. Rock Hard Rick. Rock Hard Rick. And the last guy, I swear to God, he was one of my bouncers. He was a midget, or a little person. <laughs> And he would stand up on the chair <laughs> and take people's ideas they were coming in. No. And I called him Ted E. Bear. And I, wow. went, <laughs> and I had the Diamond Dolls. I made this tape. I sent it to the AWA. Never thinking I'm going to hear shit. But what the fuck? I put it out there. I would have got him throwing it out there. And um, wow. two weeks later, Scotty, I get a call. And uh, hello, is uh, Diamond Dolls Page here? Now. Wow. No one has ever called me that before. And I, I, I if you didn't say fake it till you make it, you know, the quickest, I heard a reverend one day say, the quickest way to get there is to act like you already been there. <laughs> you know? Bang. And I thought, I'm Bang. writing that shit down. Bang. And uh, I said, uh, uh, who is this? He goes, Rob Russell from the AWA. I go, oh yeah, this is DDP. Never called myself DDP ever before that. And he says, uh, hey, uh, we got your tape. And, you know, we like your style. We, uh, we like your guys. They, they look good. Um, we want you get you guys to fly out to Vegas and do an audition. We'll check you out and give you an opportunity. He goes, well, we got one question. No one's ever seen you guys before. Where are you working at? 
Uh, well, Rob, truth is, none of those guys can wrestle. That's what, what you told him. That's what I told him. We're going to bring him out there and they can't wrestle? Right. You know, like, yeah, I go, well, they want to be wrestlers. He's like, why would you send a tape? I go, well, if you got a school they could go to. Or, you know, I could, if you got someone who needs someone to talk for them, I'm ready to go. Yo, know, Rob, hello? <laughs> you know, don't call us. <laughs> right, right. We'll call you. Right. Ah. And as life would have it, Paul Heyman, who's one of the biggest stars in the history of the universe of wrestling, he was called Paul E. Dangerously back then. And wow. he was in the AWA. And two weeks later, he left. And he went to the NWA, which would become WCW. And it left a huge void wow. for a young guy that can talk. Now, if I don't make that tape, which is ridiculous to think that it's ever going to turn into anything. If I don't take a time to make the tape, it never happens. You, just, you know, if you, if you don't ask, it's no. You know, man, so, so crazy, man. two weeks later, they called me up and said, uh, all right, Diamond, we're going to give you an opportunity. They wow. had no idea that I was six foot four and 90% of the time I was wearing cowboy boots. So when I got there, my guy was five, eight and five, 10. This is how I did my promos. This, right, you know, right, this <laughs> right. And, so, uh, you know, little baby steps, making relationships and. One thing turned to another. For the first three and a half years, and you'll know this for being an entertainer, right, right. it cost you money yeah, to yeah. be that person. Yeah, and a lot of people, well, what do you mean? You know, you what, promote you yourself. Paid right away? Yeah. 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 No, you got to put the fucking work in, dude. Yeah, you know? got to. Time, right? Yeah, so, time. So, so let me ask you this. Who, who is... Like, what's your relationship like with Dusty Rose? Oh, 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 Dusty wow. Rose. That, that's my blood, bro. Mr. Figure Fold. He is... He helped, oh. I get a call, I'm still, I'm working in the AWA, just one weekend a month. We fly to Vegas, we film four shows. So maybe I've been, I've been in business about 13 months at that time. That means I worked 13 days, period. Right. But I was on every chair, I was on every show. We do four shows. So Mike Graham from Florida Championship Wrestling, it has, he calls me and it's like, one in the morning and I don't have a problem with that I'm only up to three or four in the morning mm -hmm. but I got to catch a flight the next morning at eight so it means I got to be up around 5 30 so I'm trying to go to sleep and I hear Mike on the machine going diamond if you're there pick up the phone pick up the phone on the answer machine on the answer machine yeah and yeah, I, yeah. remember that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's funny that's funny so I pick up the phone and he says listen I got dusty roads here He's going to come into Florida, and we're going to pop the territory. He's putting the money in. I told him about you, and I want you to treat him like he's the biggest mark on the planet. I go, bro, bro, I got semi-strep throat right now, and I, 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 I got nothing prepared. He goes, I go, show him the videotape I sent you. He said, my VHS player's broken. You're, you're on. And I went, wow. God, Dustin Rhodes, the tower of power, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, getting funky like a monkey with Diamond Dallas Page. Hey. And I just went off freaking rant for about 40 seconds. And then I went, that's all I got, Dusty. I got like strep throat. And uh, Dusty, hello? You know, it's, right. Was that a recording, kid? And um, he, that, that was the strongest relationship of anything that ever happened in my life because I did go up there. Um, I was being a color commentator and I was like, Dusty, I don't know a wrist lock from a wristwatch, bro. I, I can't do the color commentating. And it was with Gordon Soley. And he's like the dean of wrestling. And he said, don't worry about a kid. Gordon Soley gonna walk you through it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sound, yeah. Like yeah. You sound, yeah. yeah. And he did. Dang, that's when, crazy. when he died, when he died, wow. his son, Cody, called me. Yeah, Cody. And he said, Dusty, he would call his dad Dusty a lot, especially with me. He said, Dusty wanted you to know that he had a lot of friends, mm -hmm. but he had five family friends. He said, and some of the people have fallen off the hand and some were lucky enough to get back on that hand. Mm -hmm. He said, he wanted me to know, meaning Cody, Diamond, never fell off that hand. Oh. 
Like from 1988 to the day he passed, Mo, we were fuck. He would help me. The big, the strongest thing he ever told me, and it, ref, and it, these are the reason why I say a lot of the things I say. Uh, I was really frustrating in 1994 because I felt like I was ready, you know. Mm -hmm. And the booking committee. I don't want to spoil this for anybody out there, but wrestling is predetermined. Okay, yeah, I was going to ask you that. Yeah, I is, was, that, is that like reality TV? No, I will not. say something Go ahead, on, that, on that story, on that topic. Yes. But no, I learned how to fight through wrestling. <laughs> yeah, I'm from the hood. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan all the way back to Kabuki. Yeah, I love yeah. that Kabuki. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the green, the green smoke. So I love. Yeah. Wrestling, I love Dustin Rhodes, everybody, all the greats. I, I didn't even know you knew about wrestling what? like that. What? Well, no, what? <laughs> See, nigga. No, look, I ain't, look, I've been mad at wrestling ever since Brock beat The Undertaker. So I've been <laughs> mad. So I ain't been watching it for a minute. But I just want to know how you feel about, like, just wrestling today. You know, like, to, to today's wrestling. So, well, first of Based all. Based off what you just said off the, you know, the. Right. Yeah. Be determined. Um, yeah. Dusty's son is Cody Rhodes. Mm -hmm. And I've been mentoring him since he was 12. And I stepped in originally to do it, because I knew Dusty was really, really busy, but he made time for his kids, no matter what. But I wanted him to have some, he was just very, I saw then he was a very special human being. And in the beginning I did it for Dusty because, well, I figured he helped me. He's been my mentor the whole time. I'm gonna help his kid. And at some point, Right around 15, it was just about me and him. I wasn't doing it for Dusty at all. Right. And just to give you a little, I want to answer that question, but I got to say this thing about Cody first, because he is the guy in the company. Yeah. He's the biggest baby face in the company, yeah. uh, in the world. And he really does sign autographs. When he gets done in the main event, he will stay in that ring. People, you know, people are leaving, but a lot of people aren't. And he will talk to them for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Cody. Wow. Cody. Cody. Yeah, that's wow. right. Bringing, talking, and you know, answering some questions. And then when he's leaving, he's doing, I used to always, people would be, would tell him to take a picture. And I go, let me have the camera. No, 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 no. Let me have the camera. Trust me, trust me. Click. You know, right. I was doing selfies back then. Cody does them all with them leaving on that whole deal. But let me tell you the thing that I knew this kid could do anything. His sophomore year, um, I said, so uh, when you when you start football, I always used to call him Young Buck back then. Mm -hmm. I said, Young Buck, when are you going to start playing uh, football? He goes, ah, I'm not going to play this year. I go, you're not playing football. You love football. And he said, yeah, I do. But, you know, I'm never going to be a standout there. He goes, but as a wrestler, I think, I think not this year, but next year, my junior year, I think I can win the States. I said, wow, that's a bold statement. I said, you know, that's going to take, he goes, absolutely, work. Mm -hmm. And he get up at five o'clock every morning and he went through a ritual from that moment on that, that I, could, I, I couldn't imagine any 15 year old doing. But that year I flew back from LA when I was living there and I watched him go 48 and 0 and wow. win the States. His senior year, and I call him all the time, you know, and senior year, I called him up and I said, uh, I said, what's up, young buck? Now, I know he just lost his 12th match. Right. And I didn't sell it, you know. Right. It's like, Dallas, I lost. I fucking lost. And I said, thank God. Wow. And he said, what? Yeah. Why would you say that? that I said, Code, you think you learned anything from winning? You learned right. from losing. Right. You learn from falling down. Yeah. You learn from making mistakes. That's how you learn. Yeah. You have to fail to be successful. Yeah. If you're afraid of failure, don't even try to be successful. Because I don't give a fuck what it is, you're going to fail. Yeah. So I said, what did you learn? And we talked about it. But what he really ended up learning was what would happen over the next couple of months. Because everybody from there on knew they couldn't beat him because he was the vengeance. But they didn't want to get pinned. So he'd take them down and he realized this kid's not trying to win. He's not trying to counter. He's just trying not to get pinned. 
He got back up. Mm. They got up, he took him down. Uh, they got up, he took him down. Yeah. They got up, he took him down, yeah. and eventually pinned him. So he would he met that same kid in the finals, state championship, and he ate that yeah, young man. He ate him for lunch. So yeah. I knew where he could go and what he could do. So in answer to your question, everything's changing. Yeah. You know, like it, and, and some for, for better, some for eh, not you. Yeah, it's not what you're used to. Well, you know, these kids are such unbelievable athletes that yeah. one of the reasons why I believe they can do what they're doing that's like unhuman. Right. Like, how did he not just break his neck? Like, how? Right. And your body gets used to a certain deal of punishment, but you are human, and eventually shit's yeah. going to happen. But the thing that these, a lot of these kids that I've noticed, they don't party like we did, you know? Oh, they a like lot strictly of them, A lot of them are straight edge. Okay. Yeah. They don't Y'all drink, they don't smoke, you. they don't do freaking drugs, they don't yeah. do shit. A lot, not all of them, right. but a lot of them. Most and, of them, yeah. That's what's up. You know, it's, they're, they're doing, they're doing stunts that are just like, oh my God. You know, like that. Yeah. Y'all was wrestling, wrestling though. So, yeah, we were, it was, it was, I think they're still doing it. They're telling good stories, but our shit was reality based. Yeah, it was real. And, and now they're going back to reality based stuff. Now the Triple H has the, you know, control now. And okay. I think he's doing a hell of a job. Now, okay, let me ask you this. Erica, can you come up? Like, for those who don't know, how do you do the diamond cutter? Oh. You want me to be the one? Okay, come on, come on, come on, man. Come on, man. I want you to show people. So yeah, this is his signature yeah, move. Yeah. All right, and you love this. You love this. This yeah, is his signature no. move. It, it wasn't so much the move as it was when you get the grip. Here, now don't stand at this. Bend over. When I put this on you right here. Oh! Yeah. See, I know you did Like, here you go. Oh. And then go, whoa! Oh, oh. oh you like the hand Oh! I made some noise. I made some noise. Put it like this: If he's not going with me, he's going with, with me. me. Yeah. 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 Better take and your own bump, bro. We're yeah. going. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. We're gonna, I got one more question about wrestling. Then we're gonna get into DDP yoga. Okay. Yep. How many like, like accomplishments wise? Like, what? Tell everybody what you accomplished in wrestling in terms of championships, et cetera, et cetera. No, the main. I, I had all the. I had all the belts at one point or another. But the main one was having three world championships, which is like our Oscar. Yeah. That's our Oscar. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right. The, the most important mm. thing, of course, is the Hall of Fame and being you know, recognized by your peers. And there's only a handful of us when you think about how many people actually wrestle. Right. And Dusty used to say, the only thing real about our business <laughs> is that first world championship ring. I'll put the championship title in that Hall of Fame ring. Mm. And uh, but I would let me let me just tell you this one story for you. Uh, over okay, there. Dusty, I was frustrated as hell, and he would let me vent. And one night I just got on a roll, and I just said, you know, Rick, I know I'm Dusty. I know I'm never going to be you or Rick or Hulk. I know I'm never going to be the world champion. But these motherfuckers, they went, Dallas, enough. What did you just say? Now, he never yelled at me ever. And I'm like, whoa, now I feel kind of stupid. I'm like, well, Dream, I'm never going to be you or Rick. He was, no, D, what did you say after that? I said, well, I'm never going to be the world champion. He goes, then what the fuck are you doing it for? That is, if you don't believe as hard as you work, as many times as you have grown in this business, if you don't believe you could be the world champion, then you get the fuck out of our business right now. Oh, wow. and, and he kept yelling at me. And I can't tell you well, because I felt like he reached through the phone and just bitch slapped me. Yeah. And, but I can tell you exactly what I did. There was a yellow ledger pad next to my phone, and I pulled it over, and I wrote on it, I'll be the world champion in five years or less. Wow. And it was four years, four months, and 14 days. And the crazy thing, Scotty. The crazy thing is, that night, I've only seen it happen twice. It was a four-way dance, meaning Ric Flair was going to be in this match, yep. Hulk Hogan's going to be yep. in this match, yep. and the franchise, the Stinger, going to be in this match. Yeah. And Nature Boy took the diamond cutter in the middle, 
The great, yeah. to me, the greatest of all time. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. Woo. Woo. And, um, <laughs> and uh, that that was huge. It, that when I was Dusty wasn't there that night because it was tomo- uh, uh, in Washington, uh, and uh, he uh, he called me the next day. I just got the cell phone, and I pick up the phone and I hear, "So how did it feel?" <laughs> I said, it feels real, Dream. It feels real. He said, that's because it is. And he hung up the phone. Wow, man. Yeah. Clap it up one more time for DDP, man. Wow. All right, man, so I appreciate you coming through. You know you had grills by Scotty, so you know I got to give you a dope <laughs> grill. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, so uh, first of all, have you ever like, have you ever seen anybody with a grill before, besides uh, me? No, cut my boy, boy, boy Teddy swims. He's got a grill. He got his grill from me, too. See? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Teddy's, Teddy's on fire right Yeah, he's been doing he's his thing. Fire. Shout out yeah. to Teddy, man. So, all right, so with this grill that I'm going to give you, what do you want to do for it? Like, what you got in mind? Well, let's stick with my brand, DDP. DDP. Oh, okay. Hey! <laughs> At the top or the bottom? Top, top, top. All right, bet. I'm going to hold you up real quick. We're going to get into it. Just make sure you don't talk. Don't move your mouth side to side oh when you do God, this. Oh, my God, I don't know if I can do that. You can do it, man. <laughs> Now, growing up, did you ever see or did, did you ever know anybody with a grill or some gold teeth? Uh, no, I'm, I'm sure. So, dude, I, I played in the freaking project so hot, man. For real? Hell yeah. Wow. I, I'd be the only white boy who uh, you know, <laughs> hitchhiked out to Lakewood or Asbury. And, uh, you know, because that's where the real town was, man. So Asbury is uh, in what, Jersey? Yep, Jersey. Wow. Jersey Shore boy, man. Okay. All right. It's cold up there, man. Nah, man. Not to you. Compared to here, it's cold. I don't like the cold. Yeah, I'm, 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 hey, I'm, bu- I'm building a, a retreat in uh, Panama City Beach on the beach. Yeah. That's when, by that time, when you get that leg right, you'll come down oh my God. and do DDP's, DDP's gauntlet, where you go from this to this to this to that. Is that what you're telling me about the cold with the cold plunge and all yeah, that? Yeah, all that cold plunge. I'm scared of the cold plunge. Uh, don't be afraid, I baby. I ain't gonna lie afraid. to you. <laughs> All right, you ready? Put right. your top lip up with just a little tad bit. Yup, open. Perfect. Fight. Stay like that. Hey, right, look, while you doing that, we're gonna get into our smile fact for the day. All right, some research suggests that people who smile more, they live longer. One study found out the intensity of a person's smile could predict their lifespan. This your boy, Scotty ATL, man. This is the smile fact for the day, brought to you by Naya and Grills by Scotty. Stay tuned, man. We're gonna get into it with my dog, DDP. Let's get it. I gotta tell you that, you know, your story and just everything you've been through, man, it's inspiring all of us. It's, it's inspiring me for sure. Thank you. you know, just yeah. to just hear some of the things like you writing it down and where you, what you had to go through to get, you know, where you are right now. It just yeah. didn't happen overnight. Nobody does A lot of people think shit. it happened overnight, yeah. though. No. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I was, I was an eight year overnight success. <laughs> You know? Yeah, but that's why it was a DDP like yoga that. too. Yeah. It took eight Tell us years. about DDP. Okay, so for those who don't know, what is DDP yoga? First of all, the first 42 years, of my, I didn't start wrestling when I was 35. My career took off when I was 40. Wow. That was 96. 97 and 98, I was on top of the world. I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal. I was living, I was living a dream like at a whole different level. And then I broke my back. And for me to get out of a chair back then, like this, uh, and this was my flexibility, I pushed myself to come up. I had three spine yeah. specialists tell me I was never going to wrestle again. I'm 42. It just exploded. I just signed a multi-million dollar three-year deal, which goes bye-bye if I can't get back in the ring in six months. So the guy who wouldn't be caught dead doing yoga... Now he's got his name attached to it. Right. <laughs> you know, that's God's work, not mine, you yeah, know. Right. You know? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And, yeah. and with DDP yoga is a combination of yoga, rehab, old school calisthenics done with slow burn movement, and something I call dynamic resistance, which is flexing and engaging as you're moving, like lifting weights, but not. So you get a kick-ass, by accident, Scotty, I created a kick-ass cardiovascular workout that dramatically increased your flexibility, strengthened your core at a whole different level, all with minimal to zero impact. Now, you guys see what I've been doing for the last 40 minutes here. This is my flexibility when I blew my back out. We got a camera shot here? 
Yeah. Am I good? Okay. This is my flexibility cold. Wow. Damn. Flexibility is youth. But core strength's a whole nother animal. Be able to stand here and talk to you on this gooey floor here and grab either foot and take it and pull it over my head at six foot four, 224 pounds, a twisted steel and sex appeal. <laughs> Yo. I, I, so, so. And 68 years young. So, do, All right, so, so look, though, no, you know, you know, sure. more it's more than that, too. You changing lives, too, right? I bought my shirt, bought my shirt. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Make some noise, man. Now, tell me, tell me about that, because, like, I've been watching some clips of people not just getting the training, but, like, people's lives Change. actually being changed. Can you yeah. speak on that a little bit? Well, the thing, the, the, the video that got us over was the disabled veteran video. And he was three, almost 300 pounds, couldn't, for 15 years, walk with knee braces, back braces, and wrap around canes. And at the end of that video, he's lost 140 pounds. More importantly, he lost the knee braces, the back braces, and wrap around canes, not just to walk, but run. And that became like, holy fuck, if that can do that, what can it do for me? What can it do for you? Like Chris Jericho, he, bro he broke his back in, in 41, 13 years ago. Five weeks later, we're on the phone. Five weeks after he saw that video, I will do whatever you tell me to do. Five weeks later, he's 85% pain-free. Three months later, he headlined WrestleMania. Yeah. For me, you know. Wow. But I'm the first, I'm the first, you know, transformation though, because that three different spine specialists told me my career is over. At 42, at 43, I'm the world champion. Bring him back in the ring. Oldest world champion ever crowned. So I became the first one. But if you want to see a great documentary, go to Amazon Prime and watch The Resurrection of Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. Jake that the snake is so powerful. So yeah. powerful. And it's, it's not just helping him and Scott Hall, AKA Razor Ramon. We got an extra 10 years out of him, man, because he would have been dead long before that on the role he was on. And again, it's addiction and helping people overcome their addictions. And that's a part of what we do. God, I, I, don't, I don't even know how it happens, except for we all who do the program, leave an example. And I make it so no one can tell me you can't do DDB yoga. Why? Because it starts in fucking bed. <laughs> like, you can't get out of bed? I got eight workouts for you in bed. Then you can sit in a chair. I got about 24 workouts sitting in a chair. Then you stand up and you use a chair to get balanced, to get up and down. So you can't tell me you can't do it. So that's the one aspect. And the other aspects is the super athlete, like Chris Jericho, who's still performing. He just signed another yeah. three-year ridiculous yeah. multi-million dollar deal at 53. Wow. Crazy. So, Come you know, on, man. So yeah. the DDP is yoga is on the app too. Yes, that's that's really where we have all of our, you know, people. We have a whole community. Okay. Like if you go to the app, it's seven days free. So you, not like you can't try it for nothing. Right. Cost you nothing to try it, and if you do do it, the number one thing that will pop up on the dashboard we call it, is the list. If you listen to my video and it'll tell you where to go. If you do that entire list, it's why we have thousands and thousands of ridiculous transformations. Right. If you just do the list, because I'm going to talk to you about rebooting your brain. I'm going to do so many, talk about so many different things that are going to inspire you to you know, set example of. We have three different eating plans that are 90 day eating plans. I mean, it's so involved. But the biggest thing we got, Scotty, is a community yeah. that started with five uh, friends, three guys, two girls. They just wanted to try to help keep each other accountable. Accountability. Now there's 78,000 people on that Facebook Come page. On, man. You are, you are the five people you hang out most with. 
And a lot of people, hmm. they're, they're, in, they're looking for hope and the people that they hang out most with pull them down and they'll find their way to that. And people help each other. Like I know you're big on the grill, all right? And mm-hmm. you know, I'm looking forward to that. But no, seriously, but, uh, but a different type of grill, which is East before the grill, um, uh, we were leaving, we did this, this contest every year. It's called Positively Unstoppable Challenge. It starts in January, and you've got between January and September to pick your best six months, whether it's January through June or February through July, whatever it is. And then people submit their, and they have to document everything. Right. Or I don't even look at it because I don't know. You can't tell me you went from this to this. I'm not going to believe you unless you document everything mm. and you reach out and help people and then we pick normally it's about eight to ten champions that come in and one grand champion who's going to win twenty twenty five thousand dollars and he has an opportunity from positively page my book one of those books got a quarter of a million dollars in it mm-hmm. you know so the insurance guy's there because it's like the hold in one thing right it costs me about a hundred grand to do it but it's worth it and we get so many unbelievable people coming in. So there was one guy, his teeth were, you know, cause he was at 540 pounds when he started. He fell and he broke some teeth. He didn't have any money to fix them. Then just life happens and before you know it, it looked real scraggly. So I call up a buddy of mine to help, you know, who helps put the, you know, the, the regular oh. implant, not the grills, right. but the implant <laughs> teeth in, right? So I call him up. And I said, hey, man, I got this guy. Is there any way they do anything pro bono? And long story short, he says, let me ask. He said, but I'm thinking about going to this other company. I think they might do it. My wife opens up a box as we're driving home. And when she opens the box as we're driving home after I hang up the phone with my buddy, and it's a video of this company called Nuvia. And what they were doing, were giving this veteran who was helping veterans get off the street and getting them back into housing and helping them get jobs. But his teeth were screwed up and they gave him a $50,000 of, work, of wow. teeth work, right? Wow. So this, I'm like, what is this? This is so crazy. I just talked to another buddy of mine who did that. And I'm looking at this, you know, looking at this you know, big smile, whatever the hell it is, it just remind me of the grill the thing here. And what ends up happening, she goes, oh my God, wait till I read this to you. Dear Dallas, we've been watching you and the people you're changing lives and saving lives. And you know, we're all about helping to do the same. Anyone in your community that you want to give a $50,000 implant grill to, you just do it and we got you. Wow. Like they, this year, they gave out two of them. Oh, two of them, two guys yeah, who had worked so hard. And when I told those cats, they were getting pearly whites. They man, were going crazy. ain't nothing. Smile, what's better than a smile? What's better than a smile, bro? Hey, man, can y'all please let some noise? We're going to get into the grill. Yeah. All right, so listen, man, this has been amazing. First of all, to have you even on the show, man, you dropped some super gems. Mm. I'm excited. I'm inspired. E, how you feeling back there? I'm, I'm, I'm so inspired just by all the stuff he gave you. Yeah. This really motivation for you too. God, so good. Yeah, exactly. Just for like your mental. Yeah. Just for you to get better in yeah, your situation. Exactly. We're gonna get him yeah, back. Like, yeah. We're gonna get him back. I'm, I'm, we talk in the back. Yeah. Once I get like where well, I can walk, walk again. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go in there with him. Okay, let's go. You know go. what I'm saying? Let's so go. y'all let's just catch go. me on BDT over too. Yeah, it's going down, my man. Hey, hey please make some noise again, man, for DDT. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, listen, man, you are live on Edgewood, man. Make sure y'all follow us, too, man, on Instagram, live on Edgewood TV. Shout out to our sponsors, Nyad. Shout out to Grills by Scotty, man. We live. What's up, y'all? This your girl, Erica Duchess, and I'm in the green room with Dutch Lee. Oh, mm-hmm. I said this on Instagram the other day, maybe yesterday.
you got to be like an artist. You gotta be everywhere. You gotta. You can't be scared to be in different places. You gotta.